Hello, my friends out there in YouTube land. Rob Ham here, and today we are continuing the conversation about the Instax Mini Evo. Specifically, we're going to talk about how I use this as a tool of creation on a recent wedding in Virginia Beach. Now, I used a couple other things for me to include the Panasonic S5, the Godox V1 O Flash, and the Ricoh Theta Z1 in order to get some interesting 360 video to make 360 tiny planets and photos, things like that. The day that we photographed on this wedding was kind of a groggy day. It was foggy outside, it was nasty, and this little camera shot a job and did a great job that normally I would reserve for my TL70. I give my brides and grooms a few freebies, a few gifts at the end of a photo shoot specifically, and that includes like mini albums or mini uh, photographs in a photo frame with like nine shots and things like that. It's a lot of fun. And that's the story I'm gonna share with you today how this camera worked on site at a paid gig. If you find this video helpful in any way, hit the like button and subscribe. Don't forget to use the Amazon links down below. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. As you can see, there's a picture on the background. Now, that's intentionally blurry, but it was a picture that was taken of the bride's wedding ring and the groom's wedding ring, specifically on the silver charger plate with their little blue, all that stuff, in front of their bouquet. Behind it is this picture right here from the Instax Mini Evo. Now the reason that I can do that is because the Evo is actually a digital printer and a digital camera. And I wanna talk about that. I've done several videos and I think that some people just don't watch or listen, it's the internet. So let me say it again. You will never see a pixel on the print that comes from the Share Printer 2, the Instax Mini Evo, Instax Play, any of the Instax Square, SQ10 or 20, because it's a analog process that develops the film. Yes, unlike this camera, for which the actual film is exposed using the lens, all of the hybrid Instax cameras, including the printers, use a digital LED print process taken from a digital image. LED means light emitting diode. The reason this is important is because sensor size at that point in time does not really matter. That was the conclusion I came to in my F2 or 20, uh, 28mm lens review I did on this camera. It just doesn't matter because it's an analog process. Earlier in the video, we talked about the, the what the day looked like. And uh, you've seen a couple of the images to recognize that shooting digitally outdoors was difficult. Specifically because, well, shooting it all outdoors was difficult because it was a grungy, very overcast day. Um, it was almost gray, grays, green. It was kind of windy. At some points in time while photographing, the fog was so much that it actually reflected the flashlight from my strobe, which meant that I needed to change my tactics and shoot more natural light. Um, all of these things mean that shooting with regular Instax on a regular Instax camera, on an analog Instax camera, that's what I'm trying to say, would have been difficult. Yes, the TL70 right here has a better lens. So does the Mini 90. The Mini 90 has a better lens than the Mini Evo. When you look at a print and you look at the lens quality, yeah, that's in a place where Fujifilm could truly improve the sensor and the lens on this camera. But the Mini Evo did something that the Mini 90 or the TL70 don't do. And that's given me the ability to preview my shot so I'm not just wasting film. On a day like that, I would have done no shots with the TL70 outdoors. I would have waited to inside where I can set up my lights and be uh, pretty well, assured of a good exposure. Here, I could take the shots that I wanted, I could even adjust the shot plus or minus two exposure levels, and then I could print the shot. Now, this is where it gets even more interesting. When you start photographing and you have both of these cameras with you, handing the bride an image out of this printer is nice, it works, I've done it a thousand times, maybe more, no problem. But pulling the film lever and then handing her this image right here, ah, man, that really excites the bride. She likes it. So there is a bit of theater that's involved in this because, well, it's fun. One thing that I noticed was that as I was photographing, right, people began interacting with me differently when I started handing out Instax prints. And they definitely were really excited at the end when I took all those prints back from them and put them in the picture frame, which had nine Instax prints, especially for the bride and groom. My standard turnaround time for editing wedding photos is between nine and 12 weeks, 
right? Wedding videos is between three and six months. That's because out of every project that my team does, and we do, I go through it manually. No matter what comes to me and how my photographers hand over the work to me and are almost ready to publish state, I always go through and edit the photos. My brides and grooms know that, and 9 to 12 weeks is actually a pretty standard turnaround time and a little bit faster than some of the other professionals here in my area. Giving them Instax prints at the event, at the venue, man, it just makes it so much more fun for them. The next thing is, why wouldn't you just use the app on your big camera and then hand them that print after sending it to the printer or the Instax? Why wouldn't you do it that way? And I think that the answer is pretty simple. When they say you're taking portraits with this camera and then you're sending them over to a printer and then waiting for that printer to print them out, it's not exactly instant. The process is kind of fiddly and when I would do that in the past, I would usually have my assistant downloading the images at the same time. But that means then I've got to either give them the camera and switch to another camera or wait for a lull in the activity like dinner at the reception so that I could print those things. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna say here, this made it instant. Literally, I was able to do it right away. And I was able to add effects to the images, specifically black and white. I was able to improve the color, improve the print brightness, and adjust for exposure compensation. So I had all kinds of things. In this particular image right here, not only do I have black and white, but I've got a little vignette. And the framing of the image, as you can see right there, is perfect. Right in camera. All of those things make it an experience that looks fun to your guest. Also, recognizing that this doesn't look like a regular Instax camera is very helpful too, because it looks more like something retro. In fact, believe it or not, uh, my wedding uh, coordinator that I work with quite a lot, she thought that was another camera and expected that it was a couple thousand dollars when I was printing it out. Uh, little did she know that it's just a $200 Instax camera. I was able to produce beautiful images on site in front of the bride and groom and their eyes lit up. Now, Here's something else. If you think that the power of Instax in a gift is not so important at a wedding, think again. What does 20 Instax images cost you? Many images, specifically. What does a Instax album or an Instax photo frame cost you? Think about that. Now, how often do I see my tip rate go up because I give a gift at the end of the, the wedding? Or, more importantly, how much do people feel like I'm going above and beyond and give me a nice review at the end of the wedding? They feel great. It's all about part of the service. I charge a premium for what I do in the first place. It's built into the budget. But even if I didn't, I would definitely consider and urge you to consider if you're photographing your friends and family or portraits or out there, consider adding an Instax camera. The reason is quite simple. People love instant photography. With that being said, I'd love to hear your comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if this video was helpful. I'm Rob. I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Thanks for watching.